special shot when a new COVID booster could be available. Plus, how one woman got her wedding dress back that she thought was lost, never to be seen again. The Rundown, brought to you by Goal Zero. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Rundown. I'm Robin Winston. A new COVID-19 booster shot that specifically targets the Omicron variant could be available in two weeks. NBC News has learned the FDA plans to authorize the Pfizer and Moderna boosters right around Labor Day. We're also hearing the Biden administration is preparing to distribute the updated shots as soon as September 6. These vaccines target the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants. BA5 is responsible for nearly 90% of all new COVID cases and is primarily to blame for our summer surge. It will soon be up to jurors to decide whether the county should pay Vanessa Bryant for deputies and firefighters sharing graphic images taken at the helicopter crash site where Kobe Bryant, Gianna and seven others died. Closing arguments began Tuesday on what would have been Kobe's 44th birthday. His widow, Vanessa, is suing for emotional distress and violation of privacy. Her lawyer underscored how deputies wiped their phones after the sheriff's department was legally obligated to preserve, preserve evidence. Christopher Chester, whose wife and daughter were killed in the crash, is also suing. His attorney argues Chester and Bryant will always live in fear that the photos might turn up on the Internet. He recommends the jury award the pair upwards of $40 million each in damages. As that high-profile case comes to a close, fans pay tribute to Kobe Bryant's legacy in L.A. and Orange Counties with Mamba Day on August 24th. 8 and 24 are the two numbers Bryant wore during his NBA career. The Pacific Wheel of the uh, Santa Monica Pier lit up in purple and gold with the numbers 8 and 24 is one of the tributes. There's also a new mural just outside of the West Coast Trial Lawyers offices in downtown LA. The artist called it the largest one in the city. The Los Angeles Police Department is both short staffed and struggling with recruiting. Now Chief Michael Moore says it's beginning to impact officers response times. Moore says the department is still under its response time goal of seven minutes for all types of calls, but a lack of personnel is making it tougher. He says the department is currently short 176 officers and has been authorized to hire as many as 780 new ones. L.A. City Councilman Joe Buscaino is a former LAPD officer and says the applicant pool is demoralized and shrinking. He says that goes for both sworn and civilian positions like dispatchers. Cooler weather is on the way, but it includes a chance of thunderstorm activity. Meteorologist David Brigger breaks it down. As we go through the next couple of days, temperatures will be progressively cooling off heading toward the weekend. And actually, the weekend looks really nice across Southern California. Basin forecast on top, coastal forecast on the bottom. Mid 80s for Wednesday. As we get into Thursday and Friday, it's just about a degree cooler. But the weekend, upper 70s to low 80s, early morning low clouds followed by afternoon sunshine. Inland forecast, valleys on top, i.e. forecast down below. We've got the mid 90s for Wednesday. Cooling as we get into the weekend, into the upper 80s and the low 90s. So again, very similar to last weekend. The San Bernardino County portions of the high desert have a pretty decent chance of getting some thunderstorms for Wednesday, decreasing chances for Thursday. Relatively quiet as we get into the weekend though. And for the mountain spots, we've got a really good chance of getting thunderstorms for Wednesday. Slightly smaller chance for Thursday. Friday looks like it should say relatively dry. And the weekend forecast looks great. Sunny skies with temperatures in the mid 70s. And that is a look at your weather forecast. Police are looking for the driver who hit a moped rider in downtown LA and just took off, leaving the rider with severe injuries. So the rider was sitting at a red light last weekend on the corner of 3rd and Flower Streets at 12.30 in the morning when it happened. In the slow down video, you can actually see the blue Mini Cooper hit the moped and then just kept driving. A Toyota Prius followed the Mini Cooper and detectives hope that driver reaches out to them. If you hang out at Griffith Park, LAPD and Park Rangers want you to know about a big increase in property crimes. The LAPD was at the park Tuesday to warn visitors and tourists to be on guard and keep anything valuable out of sight. They say these crooks are part of a crime ring looking for an easy target. They originate in Northern California, come down here, and they go throughout, whether it's in Griffith Park, Hollywood Division, and sometimes we'll even see them out in Venice Beach. Police say don't leave any money or valuables out in the open. And if you have to leave something behind, make sure you store it in the trunk. It's easier and quicker for thieves to smash a car window than it is to pry open a trunk. 
I'm a power blackout, and I'm gonna put you in the dark. What is that? It's the Yeti 3000X solar generator, a home backup system from Goal Zero. Take that blackout. The owner of the Angels is looking at selling the team. Artie Moreno bought the Angels in 2003 for $180 million. And if he sold the team, he'd make an incredible profit. Forbes estimates the Angels are valued at $2.2 billion. In a statement, Moreno said it's been a great honor and privilege to own the Angels for 20 seasons. He added that it's a difficult decision to consider selling the team. Nearly any bride will tell you that picking the right wedding dress is a huge part of the marriage process, right? Well, just imagine if that priceless memento was lost in the mail. NBC4's Tony Shin brings us an incredible story of a wedding dress that disappeared in Texas and somehow ended up in Riverside County. At Overstocked in Temecula, you can find just about anything on any given day a big treasure hunt and you literally never know where you're gonna find. Veronica Romanenko buys containers filled with liquidated items from retailers like Walmart and Target. She then sells those items at incredibly discounted prices. There's times where we've had uh, customers find laptops, tablets, uh, Movado watches. And then there was the time Veronica found this wedding dress, perfectly preserved in a box. But Veronica didn't realize it belonged to anyone, so she put it up for sale at a bargain price, $10. My friend told me like, hey, this is somebody's dress. Like it's actually like preserved. Like they took it to get preserved. And I could tell because it's somebody's name at the bottom. And there it was, Jesslyn Webb Lopez, married on June 5th, 2021. Veronica knew she had to find her. I'm like, Instagram, okay, let me try Instagram. And I found her. Veronica immediately sent Jesslyn this message. And they said, hi, does your maiden name happen to be Webb? And are you missing your wedding dress? And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, I didn't know if it was a scam. I didn't know if it was real, because like, I didn't know who this was. But then Jesslyn saw the screenshot of the wedding dress. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesslyn says after the wedding, her mom sent the dress to a Texas company that preserves them. But when it was sent back through UPS, it never showed up. And they were like, well, sometimes this happens. Someone could have put the wrong label on it, sticker, whatever. Basically, it was just lost and we didn't, like, I thought I was never going to see my dress again. Until Veronica sent her the message, which Jesslyn just happened to read on a very special occasion. The day I found out, it was June 4th, um, which was the day before my one-year anniversary. Then the girl that was my maid of honor, I was being her bridesmaid in her wedding that day. So I was in a bridesmaid dress, like, finding this out. The next step, get the wedding dress back to Jesslyn. Veronica offered to mail it. And I was like, oh no, I'm not putting it back in the mail. I, there's no way I'm gonna risk losing my dress again. So Jesslyn and her husband Christo drove all the way from their home in the Bay Area, six hours to Temecula, where Veronica gave her the wedding dress she thought she would never see again. It was just, it was, it was a good moment. Jesslyn is not only grateful to Veronica, she's also thankful her priceless keepsake wasn't sold at a bargain price. Well, that somehow no one bought it for $10. How much did you pay for that? Uh, a lot more than $10. <laughs> <laughs> in Temecula, Tony Shin, NBC4 News. A lucky guy in Northern California is now a multi-millionaire. He cashed in on the state's largest prize for a lottery scratcher. Chad Fry won $20 million with a ticket like this, a set for life scratcher. So he bought the $30 ticket at a market in Placer County. He was celebrating after getting paid for a construction job. Fry says he scratched off the ticket right there in the parking lot and saw the word life and he knew he won the big prize. I mean, wow. I'm feeling a little jealous though. I mean, I play the scratchers all the time and I've never won anything. So Chad, hey, if you need someone to spend that money with, give me a call. I'm free after the rundown. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and on our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays from 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be here helping you get around with the traffic reports throughout your morning commute. I'll see you next time on the rundown.